Hey everybody, in this video, I wanted to quickly review something I said in my Anatomy of Azure policy video, and that was about exemption permissions. Now, when I do an assignment, for example, at a management group or a subscription, it's inherited down. When we do the assignment, we can do exclusions. We can exclude certain scopes. If we jump over and look quickly at the portal, we can see, hey, I can look at assignments. I could select an assignment. I can edit. And one of the things you can do is you can add exclusions. I can add not scopes that would not be included. So that's modifying the assignment itself. But there's also something called an exemption. So if I was to look at my compliance, for example, and maybe just looked at something like, I don't know, apply tag and its default, I've got some that are not compliant. One of the things I can do is I can create an exemption. And that create an exemption basically at a certain scope, like a resource group or subscription or the resource itself, creates this exemption to that policy being applied. And that can be a waiver. Uh, maybe I'm solving this policy another way. I've got different antivirus, different firewall solution, or it's mitigated. Um, so mitigated actually would be I have a different solution. Waiver would be, hey, I'm gonna delete this soon. And I can time limit that. But the key part is to create the exemption. If we look at the documentation, hey, you need one of these built-in roles, this resource policy contributor or security admin or owner, which have read and write on this authorization policy exemptions. So I need that at the level I'm creating the exemption. So if we was to quickly go and look at that role, I'm just gonna pick a management group just for simplicity. And I look at all of the different roles. If we was to actually look at that resource policy contributor down here and look at the permissions it has. Well, on the JSON, basically it has all of the different types of authorization, policy assignments, and also policy exemptions. And the key permissions it's talking about right there is this idea of, hey, look, I can create on the Microsoft authorization policy exemptions, I can write. And then also I can read and I can delete. So that's on the level itself, I want to create the exemption. So in this scenario, imagine my assignment is at this management group and I want to exempt maybe this subscription or this resource group. Well, I create the exemption. If I have that permission, I can create the exemption, right? Fantastic the senior governance people have put in these restrictions by policy that I don't think should apply to me. Hey, I'm gonna go and add an exemption at my resource group I own, or I have those roles, or my subscription, great. No, that would really defeat the whole point of being able to set policy at those levels. If I'm setting some required policy at the management group, I don't want someone at a child resource being able to exempt themselves from my policy. So if we review the documentation carefully, it says, sure, you need that permission on the scope or resource you're creating the exemption at, absolutely. But then it also says, exemptions have extra security measures because of the impact of granting an exemption. So beyond just that policy exemptions right, on the assignment level, on the assignment, I need exempt action. So if we go back and look at those permissions, there's this other one. And if we look at this, well, this is on Microsoft authorization policy assignments, exempt action. So I need this as well. But I need this permission at the scope the assignment is made. So if the assignment was at this MG1, if I have those other roles at subscription or resource group, I can't exempt myself because I also need that assignment permission at the scope in which the assignment was made. So that's to protect from 
people just exempting themselves because they're the owner of the subscription or resource group. Hey, they just go and exempt themselves. I don't want that. If I want people to be able to exempt, then they also need that assignment exempt action at the scope level the assignment is made. So in this case, it doesn't have to be that entire role. So if we go and look at those roles, I don't need the entire resource policy contributor or security admin or owner at that MG1, but I would require a role that has that assignments exempt action. I need this at whichever role the assignment is made. So that protects me as maybe that governance person that's setting the policies at a high level from people that just own their sub or their resource group or their resource exempting themselves from my policy. So that's what that piece of documentation means. Sure, on the exempt object, on the resource, yes, I need those rights, but many people will have that. But they're not gonna have that assignment exempt action by the management group, those high levels. So that's how you protect yourself. So it's really the person who, or group that are doing those assignments, they're the only ones realistically that will be able to do exemptions for the child resources unless they specifically give other people that specific permission at the scope where the assignment was made. So I hope that clears it up. A little bit confusing. Um, until next video, take care.